Hi, and welcome back to the Shamrock Quilt Studio. I'm back here today with our applique project, Miss Kelly. Last time we made some pieces for the top of the pattern, the big flower that sits up top, and I have not progressed as much as I wanted to this week. I'm hoping that next week will be a little more productive with these applique pieces. But I thought what we would do today is take a little, um, a little look at the strips that we're going to have to use for the stems and I wanted to revisit again that I had ordered the bias bars from Amazon they still have not come in so I think we need to kind of look at what our um, backup plan is going to be and I think the backup plan is going to be to make some bias tape with this clover bias tape maker so the first thing we need to do is look at how much bias tape we're going to need and I believe I've been studying this <clears throat> smaller pattern here for a little bit. And I think we only need to make bias tape for the piece that runs right here in the center. And then for the piece here that runs on these two flowers that fall down. So I'm going to take a little quick measurement with a tape measure. These don't have to be exact. But we've got about five and a half inches on the center stem and then about, because we have to move this in a curve, I would say five and a half inches on both sides. So 16, 17 inches of bias tape. So now I'm going to move this and bring my fabric in and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back and I, I checked the color photograph of the pattern and it looks to me like the stems both for the middle section and the two side pieces are made from the darkest green fabric and that would be this fabric that we made the little centerpiece from with the little green with the uh, cross hatches on it. So bias tape. Why do we use bias tape? Um, bias simply means that the cut is uh, at a 45 degree angle or a diagonal across the fabric. And the reason we do that is because there's more give in that bias than there either is in length of fabric or width of fabric. So we cut it on a bias so we can get that give where we need it. The piece going up the very center is going to be straight, so we really don't need it there. But the pieces coming off of the sides have a gentle curve to them right here. So we need to be able to lay that, that piece of fabric down and be able to curve it around as we need to. And that's why we use bias, uh, a fabric cut on the bias. And then we can either make a bias tape by manually folding it in or really when they're really small like we're going to use because we're going to try to use a number six, which I think that is most closely to a quarter inch. So it is a very tiny, if you can see just how tiny that is. It is just, just slightly smaller than a quarter of an inch. And we'll try that. If that doesn't work, this is not going to use that much fabric. We should be able to have plenty of fabric from this fat quarter to cut another one just a little bit bigger. But we are going to try it with that. So what I've done here is I'm, I, I said I need about uh, 17 inches. So I've sat my ruler here at the 45 degree angle. And I can do that by the, the uh, diagonal line here that's marked 45. And I set it in a spot where I have more than 17 inches. We could do it in the middle, but you're going to waste fabric. And this way, if you find you need it longer, or if you um, have to recut it, that gives you more, more uh, fabric to do that with. So we're going to, I think we're going to have, if we cut it right about here, we should have about 22 inches and that'll give us plenty of room to set that bias tape under the pieces 
or turn them because that might take just a little bit more, a little bit less. So we're going to cut this. Let me grab a, a rotary cutter. And it's not pressed, but it is, it is smooth pretty well. And we're going to cut. I'm going to try to keep that ruler as still as we can. If it moves just a little bit on you, it's probably not a big deal because we are cutting on the bias. Now, this quarter inch bias tape maker, it's a quarter inch across and then it has two pieces that fold up to create that flat tape. So it's a quarter inch across here, plus it's no more than an eighth of an inch on both of these places, so half an inch max. And I'm going to encourage you to cut it just a little bit <clears throat> smaller than half an inch or right at half an inch because you it's tiny and you don't want any more bulk than you need under there. So I'm going to lay this at the quarter inch spot and I can tell that it has moved just slightly. Right here, it's got a little bit of a bow on it, so we're just going to pull that bow out. And for demonstration purposes, I think what I'm going to do is cut this right at a quarter of an, excuse me, half of an inch, so that if we run into problems, we can see it together. Okay, so there we have it. That little tiny piece of fabric is what we're going to work with. And I'm going to clip these together, pin them together, so that one doesn't get separated from the other, and put that out of the way. Now, we're working with this. Let's, let's tidy up a bit. And we're going to get our ironing surface out. This has some things on it from our last video. And as I've encouraged you to do, I'm going to put these away into the template box so they don't get lost in our extra material. Now this part of the project is uh, uh, item that we're making. We're not creating a template and having the template guide us. We are the creator for this. So we're going to bring out, we're going to try this with the mini iron. I'm not sure that it gets hot enough, but we will try it. And I have two things. I have a little kit that I ordered off of eBay, or not eBay, off of Amazon, and it, it, it has a lot of things in it. I got it because it has a lot of variety in sizes. I've had mixed results with them. It's not a name brand. This um, piece that we're using today, this bias tape maker, is a clover. I find they're a little better quality. Um, here, for example, is the one that came out the kit and the clover. And the difference is, if you can see that, the clover is very flat. And it's really going to form a crisp edge on that bias tape. The piece that came in the kit is more round on the end. And it's not going to create a crisp end when it comes out the tape maker. It's relying on the ironing implement to make that crisp edge. We probably could correct that by getting a pair of pliers and, and crimping it down a little bit. But since I have the same size in the clover, we're going to work with that. And the kit that I got has an 18 millimeter, which I think is a half an inch, a 25 millimeter, which probably is three quarters, getting close to one inch. And then one that's, I would say that one's the half inch. 
the 12 millimeter makes sense. I also, I wanted to show you this. I bought something that's called a extra large bias tape maker. And this produces, it says one inch double fold or two inch single fold bias tape. And I bought this to try on quilt binding. So I'm not sure if we're gonna use it with this um, project or if we're gonna use it with another project. But I do have that and I would like to try it. It looks like it's on par with the quality of the clover because of the way it's very flat across. And if you look in there, you can see where it allows the fabric to go over and it's got lots of room. So we'll try that later. I just wanted to show you all the varieties of implements that you can use as tools for your bias tape. Now, this is pretty simple the way this works, but it can be a little frustrating too. And we're going to take and clip the end of this fabric into a point. And we're going to put it in so that the, the right side of the fabric is facing you. And this bias tape maker, the flat part, is facing you. And the green part is on the inside towards me. And we're going to put it in with that little point of the fabric. And because it's so tiny, that contributes to it being a little finicky. We're going to feed it in until it stops feeding. And you want the fabric to stay flat and straight as it goes in. Now, it's probably not going to go all the way because at the end it's folding it up. So use something pointy and there was a little awl that came with this, and that's great. And on this side, you can see that it's open. So we're going to reach in there, and we're just going to help it out until it comes out the other side. And at that point, you're going to make sure that it's pretty much lined up so that the fabric is folding over evenly. And then that's when we're going to start ironing. Now, two things. You want to make sure that the fabric goes in straight into the bias tape maker. You don't want it coming in at an angle because it's not going to fold right. And you also want to make sure that it, as it comes out, it's ironed. I'm going to try, because the surface is a little padded, putting a couple of pins in here to try to hold that so that's not something that I have to hold. I only have to worry about the fabric and what's coming out. So the very end is not going to fold properly. You're going to want to get right up there next to the bias tape maker and make your first fold and press it into place. And I'll tell you what I think would be easy too. I think we're going to move this just so that it's a, frankly a little easier for me. We're going to Put that here, and we're going to use this pen tape some more. Pen trick, rather. And we're going to make some little runways, almost, for that fabric to come in very straight. So we've got some pins here that are going to hold it, and we've got pins here that are going to hold our bias tape maker. So what we need to do is just pull on the bias tape and iron at that spot. Let's see how that works. And I can keep a watch on that fabric and see how we're doing. Now, these little irons, they don't get as hot, I don't think, as a regular iron. So we're going to go slow. And I want to show you how we're doing. Look at there. It's very straight. It's pressing down very crisply, crisply, and that's what we want. Don't get in a hurry because if you go too fast, the fabric is not going to get hot enough. It's not going to be pressed in place, and it's not going to hold that fold. So I'm pulling it. Whoops. See, I did it right there. I pulled too fast. I'm going to back it up. 
and I'm going to do that again. I got to talking and pulling too much. Because you're not seeing what's coming out of the bias tape maker. This is working really well. I have made some bias tape in the past that was really a pain. You'd pull it out and it wouldn't hold its shape and you'd end up just getting very frustrated with it and throwing it away. I think, honestly, I love the fact that the kit had a bunch of sizes and came all together with all the pens and the clips and the awl and just everything, but the clovers appear to be, at least in my experience, the best. And patience. Okay, we're getting close to the end. The other end is just going through the tape maker now. And we're going to keep going. And I am pulling on that fabric, and normally you would not want to do that but it's going to bounce back out because we're not pulling on it that long and because it is bias tape we're not really concerned about how long it is with if it stretches out and it's a little bit longer that's not going to be a huge issue we just want the width of the bias tape to be consistent The other thing you could do is you could spray starch as you're doing this. Um, since I'm probably finished with this, I'm going to unplug it. Okay, so we've got it made. And let me show you what it looks like. It's nice and consistent all the way down. Now, if you leave this just like it is, it's going to unfold and you're going to do it again. And it's more difficult to run it back through the tape maker again. So the only way that you're going to be able to fix it is to manually hold it down and press it. What I recommend is that you find some type of uh, heavier paper or very lightweight cardboard. Let me see. I, ooh, ooh, I touched that iron and it was hot. Little piece of tape. And we're going to tape the end of this bias tape onto this cardboard. And then we're going to carefully put it around so that this cardboard is going to hold that bias tape, its shape and its uh, width, and it's not going to allow it to unfold itself. And then we'll just clip off the tape if we need to, if it wants, doesn't pull off. So there you go. We've just made about 20 inches of bias tape. We made it in the smallest bias tape maker with just a little mini iron. You could, you could use a real iron. For this size, I found this one to be better. And it was hot enough. It's hot enough to burn me, too. But um, that worked great. I'm, I'm impressed with that, actually, because, I, like I said, I've made it before, and it, it can be a pain. But that was, that was quick and easy. And then when we get ready to use this, what we will do is we will either use pins to place it into the correct place on the um, background that we have, or we'll use a, a glue basting method. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do, but we'll do one of those two. And um, I think that's all I have for you today here at the Shamrock Quilt Studio. Uh, I hope that during this week, I'm planning on getting the other three pieces done for that top flower so that at least by our next video, I can show you how I'm pinning those on the background and move forward to sewing those pieces onto the background so we have at least that top bloom in place permanently on the background. So that's my goal for this week. I've, I've got a list for the week so I'm going to be busy 
and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you next week with another video on Miss Kelly. And um, if you need to step back and see some of our past videos, just check the playlist out for Apple K Miss Kelly. And we also have some other projects on the channel that you could check out as well. We have a Facebook page that you can look at. Um, we sometimes link the videos there. We have discussions and pictures on different things there to kind of tell you what's going on on the YouTube channel. And here at YouTube, like our video, subscribe to our channel so you'll see the next one. And we'll see you next week at the Shamrock Quill Studio. Thank you. Bye-bye.